Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics. I had a lot of people contact me and notify me that Robert Lockhart had actually just passed away recently. He'd been eating a fruitarian diet for over 30 years. And the reason why I'm making this video, and first off, I want to give my condolences to his family. I can feel for them going through this grief process. Someone passing away is really, really horrific. So I'm sorry you're having to go through this. But I need to make this response video to make a lot of people aware of why a raw vegan diet is very dangerous. And he at the age of 75 years old. But apparently a raw vegan diet is one of the best diets for health and longevity, at least he believes and a lot of other people believe. And there's a lot of speculation as to why he passed away. Durham Ryder saying here, another dry fast victim, I warned Robert years ago, it's a very dangerous stupid thing to do, it creates anemia and massively taxes the body. Well, that is debatable. This is the second person I personally know to during a dry fast. Robert did another dry fast, got massive heat stroke, entered a coma with kidney failure and had multiple heart attacks common from extreme dehydration. Yes, in fact, those things did happen, but was it necessary to do dry fasting? Not necessarily. We know Duran Ryder makes a lot of claims that are not necessarily true. You grew the best, best jackfruit in the world, man, and he had the second best fruit farm in Australia. So this is what I want to make people aware of. A lot of people say, well, if you're having the best fruit possible, then you're going to be the healthiest possible. Well, in this case, obviously not. He got very deficient, and this is definitely what, in my opinion, caused him to have this go on. You got caught up in this stupid dry fast it cost you your life, man, what a waste. So let's hope your experience is warning noobs need. Well, I think people need to be warned against you and you promoting white sugar and all these other crazy things with diets that are extremely low in fat and protein that actually will have a negative effect on people's health, and it has done for so many people. And then you got Ted Carr as a fruit here for around 10 years talking about this, and he says at the end of this, Rob always said the healthiest way to was to dry fast till so a lot of people are basing what Ted has said on the cause of his death but is that necessarily true not necessarily if you know about fruitarian diet it's very low magnesium magnesium is a gate keeper for calcium being allowed into the muscle cells to cause contraction without magnesium to guard the channel calcium floods the cell and leads to hyper contraction of the muscle cells which translates into angina and even heart attack so that could be one big probable cause of why he had multiple heart attacks. And yes, he did have a heat stroke. If you don't know what a heat stroke is, it's where your body temperature raises quite high, as it says here, 104 Fahrenheit, which is 40 Celsius or higher. And this is dangerous and you do need to go to hospital. And I do know that he refused hospital treatment for quite a while. So maybe if he'd gone sooner, his life wouldn't have ended. And if you look at him in this video, you can see he is not looking good at all. And this was two years ago. And even if when you, you look about seven years ago, which I'll show you in a minute, he still doesn't look good whatsoever. He looks like he's got sarcopenia. His muscles have wasted his way and he's got excess fat. See, he's skinny fat. He looks very malnourished and you can see he's massively deteriorated, which is due to this stupid restrictive raw food diet. And if you don't know what sarcopenia is, it's a syndrome characterized by progressive and generalized loss of skeletal muscle mass and strength, and it's strictly correlated with physical disability, poor quality of life, which I'm sure he had a poor quality of life with how he doesn't look like his body's very good at all in any way, shape or form, and even So that could be another reason as to why he had his life be ended at just 75 years old. There's so many people that have lived 100 year old or even above 75 years old that eat a standard diet. So it goes to show that amazing raw vegan diet isn't as good as a lot of people tend to believe. But vegans always wanna blame something else rather than some sort of vegan diet, such as this fruitarian diet. Obviously, there's many different vegan diets out there. But this is him at the age of 68 years old. Again, his physique doesn't look good. He looks very malnourished. It just doesn't look good in any way, shape or form. He's lacking all the essential fatty acids and all the amino acids that he needs to not have sarcopenia and to be as healthy as possible. So if he'd been eating a lot of animal-based foods and getting all of the cholesterol he needed, essential fatty acids and all the other nutrients he'd been lacking in his diet for so long, he wouldn't necessarily have this horrific happen to him. If he hadn't necessarily been eating this way and got everything he needed, his life wouldn't have been so soon. And yeah, if you haven't got the building blocks that you need to rebuild after you've been doing things like dry fasting, you're gonna completely waste away. So you can't blame the dry fasting, you can blame the malnourishing diet. So yeah, he's 68 years old here. I wanna compare him to a 65 year old that 
eats a primal diet, which is a ketogenic meat-based diet, and he is 65 years old, so only three years younger. And look at him. He's definitely not got sarcopenia. He's definitely not wasting away. He looks very healthy, very strong, and very fit. Doesn't look like he's gonna end his with his diet at all anytime soon. And I don't think it will in the future because it's a very nutrient dense diet. So just to give an equal comparison because with Robert Lockhart I showed a photo and video as well because photos can be messed around with and make someone look better. Let's see what this person, Mark Sissy, looks like in this video. And oh wow, he definitely hasn't got sarcopenia. He looks very strong, he looks very fiery, he looks very alive, his skin looks smoother. He doesn't look as aged as Robert Lockhart did at the age of 68 years old. And look, I know from this person, because I'm aware of him, that he could keep up with most people that are even very, very young. And man, his diet is definitely working for him. He's definitely a good example of a diet that is working. And it's funny, people like Harley Johnstone that promotes 30 bananas a day, a high carb diet, low fat, low protein as well, not necessarily raw, sometimes he promotes raw, sometimes semi cooked, and so on. He's had so many girls and other people deteriorate in his diet and made the teeth all just deteriorate and make them get obese or cause loads of other issues. Yet he never blames the vegan diet. He says it's because of this or that or that, but he's a man of many excuses and he lies through his teeth like crazy about so many things. So if you look at that post that he made that I read out, there's one comment by Mike Velocity known as Fruit and Strength for Raw Vegan and he knew him personally. And he actually quoted the post that Robert Lockhart's wife actually made. And I want to read this out so you can actually know the truth because like I said, a lot of people spreading lies out there. And what I would do with this is not read it all out, I'll just read the parts I think is important. That's the passing of my dear father and husband Robert Lockhart who transitioned yesterday, 29th of November at 6.06 p.m. at the age of 75. His long-standing career over 45 years as an excellent chiropractor impacted many, which is very true. His great passion, however, was in diet, nature cure, and being an advocate of healthy living. Well, a raw vegan diet, that's what they're talking about. Both in eating raw foods, educating about physical activity and the human frame. We all know he was the best at handstands. Yeah, he's very good at them from what I'm aware of. We like to clarify the chain of events that lead to his body shutting down as it wasn't just one thing. As you may or may not be aware, Rob has eaten only raw food diet for nearly 40 years. Over the last 10 years, he significantly decreased his water intake, drinking only minimal coconut water or freshly squeezed juice, quoting that he got all the water he needed from the high intake of mainly fruits he was eating, which yes, you will. Go and eat a watermelon. Oh my God, when you used to eat watermelon on a fruitarian diet, it just made me pee like crazy. When you're eating so much fruit that's high in water content, which he was, you don't need to drink water, otherwise you're gonna overhydrate yourself, and then guess what? You're gonna keep peeing and peeing and peeing, and then you're depleting yourself of electrolytes, which then could cause you to have some serious negative effects. It's actually best for a lot of people on a fruitarian diet to not drink a lot of water. In the last five years, he commenced dry fasting for periods of time, which meant no food or fluids, including water for extended periods up to 48 hours which 48 hours is just a short time. Oh my God, I've done lots of dry fasting, I promote it, but I don't promote it to people that should not be doing it, which some people should not. And to be honest, a lot of people wanna blame the dry fasting, but do you know what? So many people that do the London Marathon in England have whilst doing this. Is it necessarily the marathon's fault? No, their body's in a state where it just can't handle it and they're not meant to be doing it, so it breaks down and it makes them pass away. He would also intermittently fast each day, no food, no water for roughly 19 hours with a five hour eating window, which there's so much scientific research, so it's very, very safe. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It has so many different health benefits. The doctors believe this had done significant damage to the kidneys over the years as scans and tests performed showed atrophy, scarring, and significantly reduced function due to him definitely not getting all the nutrients he needs. Of course, doctors are gonna blame the dry fasting because they don't understand dry fasting at all. Unlike Dr. Filanoff, which is a Russian scientist that's done so much research over the years to prove dry fasting is really, really amazing. But yeah, if you're lacking the nutrients, you're not getting so long, it's gonna break down all your organs. It obviously wasted away all his muscles through his sarcopenia, and guess what the next thing it's gonna tap into? Because he's hardly got any fat or muscle. It's gonna start eating the organs and breaking them down and making them malfunction. 
Rob's immune system was suffering and he picked up a chest infection from a bacteria called this. This is found in the soil in a tropical climates. So he was an avid planter of rare fruits and was constantly tending to his trees and orchard. This contributed to a bad cough and mucus on the lungs, which he said, I'm just eliminating, don't worry. Oh God, one of these people again, that's a detoxifying, crazy, evangelistic, dogmatic, idealistic person. Everything's just a detox symptom, don't worry, I'm just eliminating. It's like, oh my God, no, not at all. And this is why people get into dangerous territory with this type of diet, because they believe everything's a detox symptom, which I'll talk about more in a video that I'm gonna to post tomorrow, which I actually made yesterday, but I had skipped that one to make this very important one that people asked me to make. He then proceeded to do a dry fast of 72 hours, no food, no liquids, which pushed his body too far, which he admitted. Yeah, your body didn't need you to be doing that all. It actually needed certain nutrients like magnesium and potassium and other nutrients you've been lacking for so long, so then your body could actually recover and not go downhill and then end your life. In the subsequent weeks, he was quite deliberated. His kidneys started to shut down, which meant that he couldn't clear the food from his lungs and his electrolyte balance was thrown out. Yes, and I'm sure it had been thrown out for a very long time because he hadn't been getting everything he needed to due to this extremely restricted fruitarian diet. Having a proper balance of electrolytes, including potassium, ensures the heart beats properly, which I just mentioned, also magnesium as well. Combined with his lungs not getting out of oxygen due to the infection, which was later diagnosed as pneumonia, also put more pressure on his heart. After much coaxing, he reluctantly went to the hospital for treatment as he was on the verge of complete kidney failure. So yes, he left it too long because he's been one of these extreme natural hygienists that don't believe in hospitals whatsoever and he left it too long and look what happened to him. And a cardiac arrest happened at home. He accepted testing finally and treatment in hospital. The quality of care and respect for Robert was amazing and he blessed us with another two weeks with him. Last Saturday, he suffered with two massive cardiac arrests then was placed in ICU on life support. We were all hoping he would recover. However, over the week, unfortunately, he didn't regain consciousness, although we believe he could hear us at times. There was no significant signs of neurological activity. His organs, including lungs, kidneys, liver, and heart continued to fail. In the last week, they had him on dialysis, a ventilator, and a medication to keep his heart beating. His condition continued to deteriorate, and we were advised that there was no treatment options to fix his enlarged heart known as cardiomyopathy and leaking valves with an injection fraction of 15 to 20% at most with medication stimulation. Out of respect for his wishes, we, which all the different family members that were there, made a joint decision to let him go peacefully without being plugged into any machines or medication. It was very hard at time, how we believe he was in the end happy to be set free, which I'm sure he was. And I feel really emotional for this. It's a very sad thing to go through. I had someone years ago pass away that I love dearly and it's not nice at all. But yeah, I'm not gonna blame the dry fasting. Like I said, I believe if he was eating all animal foods and getting all nutrients to make all of his hormone function optimal, neuron transmit production, and to actually nourish all of his organs and that, this wouldn't have happened. And I keep seeing it with so many raw vegans time and time again, who are just wasting away. It's like, come on, wake up, stop messing with yourself. And don't listen to people like Holly Johnson. God, this person is like some type of clown that really doesn't know what he's talking about at all. One of the worst health teachers out there by far. And if you didn't see my debate with him recently, I put a link for that above that's very, very interesting. So yeah, that is the end of the video. Don't be silly and don't do this fruitarian diet unless you're doing it for a short period of time for a cleanse. And it just goes to show like, look, what happened to him? Learn from someone that really messed themselves up in a really bad way due to this extreme diet. And don't bad math dry fasting because it necessarily isn't the dry fasting's fault. Anything can be dangerous if you do too much of it or when it's not a good time for you to do it. And any type of detoxification is bad for you when you're really low in nutrition already. So don't be silly. And yeah, apparently if you look slim like this though, and you're eating loads of carbs in the world, even if your insulin and blood sugar levels going all through the roof is good for you. And even if it's coming from white sugar, it's good for you, which is not. So yeah, leave your questions down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and catch you on the flip side. Peace.